Mine Workers Pension Scheme, MPS, a brief history. The MPS is one of the biggest pension schemes in the UK. Its government guarantee, surplus. Sharing arrangements and associated ability to pay bonuses to members are features that are not found in most other UK pension schemes. Please see slide 2. Mine Workers Pension Scheme, MPS, a brief history. The MPS is one of the biggest pension schemes in the UK. Its government guarantee, surplus. Sharing arrangements and associated ability to pay bonuses to members are features that are not found in most other UK pension schemes. The trustees often get questions from members about these arrangements. The trustees therefore thought it would be useful to provide a short history of the scheme and its benefits and how they have evolved over time. History of the scheme prior to 1994 The MPS was set up in 1952. The scheme is governed by rules which set out in detail the benefits payable to members. The responsibility of British Coal was to pay the balance of cost, that is, British Coal's contributions went up or down over time based on the financial Circumstances of the scheme Like many pension schemes, there were surpluses in the MPS. In the late 1980s and 1990s. And, also like many schemes in the UK, these surpluses were partly used to give members additional benefits, these included, amongst other improvements. A reduction in retirement age from 65 to 60 additional increases to pensions and the granting of an additional 25% pensionable service to members, and partly to reduce the level of contributions paid by the employer. 1994, change of structure to the scheme following privatization. On privatization in 1994, the scheme was to the build-up of new benefits. The government at the time the Secretary of State for Trade and Industry, took on the role as guarantor for the scheme from British Coal. The scheme had a surplus in 1994. 50% of this surplus was to enhance members' pensions immediately, with the other 50% being payable to the guarantor. The guarantor agreed to leave its share of pre-privatization surpluses in the scheme as the investment reserve. This was to be paid to the guarantor over a 25-year period to 2019. A number of further discussions took place around this time, covering the security of benefits, the use of future surpluses and the responsibility for running the scheme. The outcome of these discussions was an agreement between the guarantor and the trustees, which is reflected in the deed. The key provisions of the guarantee deed were as follows. I. All pensions earned by members up to 1994, including the 1994 benefit improvements, would be guaranteed by the government, along with annual inflation. Linked increases, RPI, to those pensions. 2. Detailed provisions were agreed for dealing with surpluses or deficits arising in the future. Although very complex, the intention of these provisions was that a any surpluses at future actuarial valuations would be split 50 forward slash 50, with the members 50% being used to provide bonus pensions and the guarantors 50% being paid to the guarantor over a 10-year period. b any deficits at future actuarial valuations would be the responsibility of the guarantor firstly through use of the investment reserve and, if this was insufficient, through payments of new funds to the scheme, and see any deficits had to be made good before a new surplus could be identified. 3. Bonus pensions arising from future, post-1994, surpluses were not covered by the guarantee and, if future financial conditions those bonus pensions could be
lost. However, a secondary guarantee was introduced ECL that meant that a member's total pension could not fall in cash terms and those bonus pensions would gradually. The existence of the guarantee has enabled the trustees to invest the scheme's assets in such a way to target surpluses and bonuses to members. These bonuses mean members' pensions. Today are, on average, 33% higher in real tens than they were in 1994. The 2002 and 2006 discussions between the trustees and guarantor over the period between 1994 and 2000, investment conditions were particularly favorable. And the trustees were able to award significant new bonuses from the surpluses disclosed at the 1996 and 1999 actuarial valuations. The guarantor also benefited from its share of those surpluses. Following the conclusion of the 1999 actuarial valuation, the trustees, the guarantor with a request to review the guarantee arrangements, that the actual outcome since privatization had been better than had been expected in the original risk assessment calculations. Unfortunately, the guarantor refused to agree to any changes to the guarantee deed, due to the radical change in the climate for pensions over the period of the Discussions between 2000 and 2002. In autumn 2006, following publication of the results of the 2005 actuarial valuation, the trustees asked for another meeting with the guarantor to discuss the terms of the guarantee arrangements. The guarantor declined the trustees stating that, in its view, the guarantor regarded the guarantee as fair and not negotiable. The scheme newsletters issued to members at the time provided information and kept members informed about the progress of these reviews. Recent and future discussions with the guarantor. Since 2006, financial conditions have worsened and the outlook for future surpluses is significantly worse than it was in the late 1990s. Moreover, in these conditions, the value of the government guarantee to the members is particularly high. The valuations since 2005 have often showed deficits. Given their earlier experience of attempting to renegotiate the terms of the guarantee based on financial fairness, and bearing in mind how financial conditions have changed for the worse. The trustees have concluded in recent years that a further similar request would lead to the same outcome. The trustees have, however, hard to improve the current and future outcomes for members, within the rules of the scheme. They have also continued to seek opportunities to engage with the guarantor for the benefit of members. For example, after a period of good investment returns, they persuaded the guarantor to agree to an interim actuarial valuation as at the 31st of March, 2013, the outcome of that valuation was I, an immediate new bonus of 4% of guaranteed pensions in March, 2014. 2, an increased likelihood of a surplus and hence new bonuses after the 2014 actuarial valuation, the trustees have subsequently been able to award these bonuses, and 3. Repayment of E700M of the investment reserve and an extension of the life of the remaining investment reserve, about Elden, until 2029, instead of 2019. Without this change, the whole of the investment reserve, nearly E2BN, would have been payable to the guarantor by 2019. The investment reserve acts as a valuable buffer to enable the trustees to provide some level of new bonuses even when the actuarial valuation discloses a deficit. Looking forwards, the trustees' role is to administer and run the scheme in line with the rules. They are, and always have been, committed to achieving the best possible outcome for scheme members. 
the 2013 Interim Valuation and Investment Reserve Review, and the 2014 Valuation Results, are examples of their success in this regard. The trustees must, of course, always act within their authority. The power to change the guarantee arrangements, including the surplus sharing arrangements, lies jointly with the guarantor and the trustees. Neither party can change the arrangements without the agreement of the other party. The guarantor has made it clear repeatedly in the past that it does not regard the 1994 agreement as being unfair and that it has no intention of agreeing to changes that are not in its interests.